Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So it's been a while since I filmed one of these videos, but uh, from now on I'll be more consistent and try to do more videos regarding my invertebrates that I have. So uh, I'm sure you guys have seen, but I have, um, I breed uh, CRS, cherries, the golden backs, all kinds of neocaridinas, as well as a lot of caridinas. But uh, I transitioned to um, crayfishes now, and I have a lot of electric blue crayfishes, and this is why this tank has this kind of look. I will first show you guys my entire, you know, setup so you guys can get an idea of how many tanks I have and how many different species I have in my, in my room first. So this is one of my uh, crayfish tanks. Uh, as of right now, it looks a little messy because it used to be my CRS tanks. So that's why there are grass and other plants here and then that's why this wood is like tilted this way and there's a bunch of jumble of things. And that's why I have this filter as well. So I know that I, I've done my research with the crayfishes and I, that's why I'm going to, you know, renovate this entire tank to make it look like more like a crayfish tank. Get rid of, you know, these grasses because it just simply looks a little too messy and then have a better filtration and more stable temperature for these guys. 72 is perfect, honestly, so I'm not too worried about the temperature, but water changes and the entire setup has to kind of change in order for it to be more appealing because this is like the first thing that we see when we walk in the room but right underneath we have three other tanks and one on the left here is a CRS tank and I mix CRS it, it was predominantly mostly for uh, CRS but now it's mixed with CBS the crystal black shrimps and the reason that they're mixed is because the CBS tank didn't do anything there were no breeding happening or anything you know they weren't even dying you know consistently 15 CBS since probably three months ago not a single one died so I just decided to mix it after a couple of months now it's been about you know four or five months and this used to be a um, a purely female CRS tank but now it's mixed and I'm hoping to see some you know breeding happening in this tank and right next to it we have a CRS tank that does really well with breeding so I'm seeing a lot of uh, chivies let me show you a couple there's there's a couple back right there as you can see those babies are doing great and on the wall there's a couple there so entire setup here is very stable the water itself too that's why they're doing so well with the breeding and you know the whole ecosystem and filtering is, is great for them and we have one of the uh, crayfish tanks as you can see this is a little you know a bit messy and I personally don't like it I at first I liked it because you know a lot of hiding spaces is exactly what they need and good bubble air aeration is very important but I as an owner it's simply I'm not having fun because I haven't seen this guy in probably three days now since I got him at first I you know he was moving around but now he's not doing anything so I'm kinda of worried about him so I wanna make sure that I see him so I'm gonna implement a couple of things such as, you know, these pipes that I buy. I got these from uh, Daiso for a really good price, and I, bought, I literally emptied the shelf. So this is why I'm going to put in these two tanks right here. So the one over there for the craze, and the one in the middle for the craze. Right next to these tanks, I have the main tank right here. So this is the main setup of, you know, my for, for my fishes originally it used to be my guppy, guppy tank, breeding tank. But now it's emptied out. I, I sold all my gut bays except for a couple. And then now I have a bunch of you know plants growing really well. And I breed quarries now. As you can see in that corner, I have quarries in there. Oh, the aeration in this tank is too too good. But I have a bunch of quarries. I have about 16 quarries, uh, panda quarries in here. And they're doing great right now. Not a single one died in probably eight months. And I'm seeing a couple of eggs floating around like on the wall, but it, it's, it disappears the next day. So I'm trying to make sure that I do it well. So I'll focus in this tank and make sure to give you guys the latest news on this. And I actually added one of my crayfishes in here. I know that it's not good to have crayfishes with the bottom feeders. But look at it. Perfect aeration. So many hiding spots. We have the driftwood. You know, like all these tunnels in there is perfect for crayfishes as well as for these quarries and you know golden algae eaters in there and I have um, four clown plecos 
one in there. You can barely see its uh, nose right there. I'm sorry that it's not focusing. But this tank is perfect for crayfish, so I decided to add just one in it. It's not as aggressive either, so I think it'll be perfect for these guys. But this was the main tank, and right next to it, we have a uh, assortment of shrimp. So this shrimp tank is very important because this is a cull tank. You just sort out all the shrimps that doesn't have the pattern or the color that you guys desire. So you just separate them into this one tank that you really don't care about. You can feed these guys to you know, your fishes or shrimps, where, whoever you want to feed to or whatever you want to do with. But this is one of my cull tanks right next to it. I have uh, something called a breeding crayfish tank for newborn crayfishes for the future. That's why it's completely white, so I can spot these guys, and the walls are actually blue. So, um, I don't know if you guys know, but crayfishes are able to camouflage for their own protection, and they will change the color depending on the environment that you live in. So, I have the three walls, uh, except for this one, completely blue. As you can see on the side, it's blue right here. This little right there, so blue right there, and blue, so the entire wall is covered with blue. And then I will, you know, try to resort this as well so it's it's more organized. I have one female in there that I think will egg up, like bury, get buried soon. So um, I, I'm going to have to make sure that this tank is more visible. And right next to it is the guppy tank that I have. You know, I sold all the guppies and this is all I have left. I have about, you know, 50 in there, male and female, and they're still breeding, which is good. And this tank has a um, sump connected to it. That's why the water is flowing. Water goes out that way. Just to simply, you know, put, put the tank. It's not too important. But anyway, on top of it, we have the amazing looking, um, kind of jungle-like uh, crayfish tank. We have the Moai statue that I personally built and out of clay in my college, college life. And then we have some wood looks and under the cave looks. A lot of grass. And we have the volcano crayfish. I don't exactly know the full name of this guy but uh, they sold me as a volcano crayfish and this guy is the most active crayfish that I have ever owned. I haven't owned a lot of crayfishes for many years but this guy is so active he literally goes anywhere and everywhere explores the whole tank so I'm very happy that I put him in here and so this will stay the way it is though because it looks just perfect I really don't care because I see him very often look he's just going everywhere and right next to it we have a bunch of Neocaridina breeding tanks so first to start off we have the yellow golden bags like I said these golden bags aren't exactly breeding I don't exactly know why I think these may be all females depending on you know oh, there, there's one dead in there as well so this tank isn't doing too good I have a really good water and everything, all the parameters perfect, and I do water fill, um, I change water every week, at least 20% of it, but this tank is the only Neocaridina tank that aren't breeding, which is kind of sad, but I'll try to keep on work on it, and this one is a orange Sakura Neocaridina tank. So we have a lot of buried shrimp in here, as you can see this one is also buried. There you go, and then we have a lot of uh, chivies in there as well can't exactly focus maybe it's too close but anyway I have about 50 orange sakuras in this tank just like this and then right next to it we have the bloody mary this tank was the first tank to breed great they're doing amazing right now so there are a couple of chivies there baby shrimps right there and some juveniles you know floating around and some, you know, hiding caves and whatnot, but they don't actually necessarily use those, so I'll probably take it out because it's, it's kind of a waste. But on the wall back there in the rocks, there's a lot of um, babies there. So this tank, honestly, I'm not too worried about. So uh, these three tanks, they're just breeding Neocaridina tanks right next to my um, crayfish tank. And right, these, are all, these are all 10 gallons, by the way, and that one's a 20 gallon, obviously. But right underneath, on the left side, we have all the snails in the world, literally. It's just a uh, one ram's ram horn snail, but look at this colony. They grew into literally hundreds, almost a thousand, I'm sure. So I have so many ram's horn snail in here. If you guys want some or need some, I'll, I'll be happy to free, um, ship them out to you, you know, uh, at a really cheap price. So just let me know. But this tank is really doing amazing with all these ram's, horn, ram's horns. And then right next to it, we have the blue, um, blue diamond Neocaridina. They're really dark blue, so I can't exactly, you know, I don't know if, there, there's one right there. 
but um, there you go. Very hard to focus. But you know, I have I have about 15 in here, and they are buried, so that's great. And for this tank, I actually have the guppy grass in there. I mean, all the all the tanks have guppy grass, but I also have these floating plants. Kind of forgot a frog. It was it frog plants or something like that. I kind of forgot the name, but it's a beautiful tank. And right next to it, right next to it, we have the um, uh, Caridina CRS tank. This is the most proliferating uh, CRS tank that I have. There are this tank has the most baby shrimps, most uh, chivies. Look at all these guys doing great. A lot of um, a lot of baby shrimps there, and I can't, I can't seem to find bunch. But when it's a meal time, there there's a lot you, you you can see it and also this tank has a heater there as well and last but not least very excited to show you guys this one let me actually block the light so not the, there aren't too much reflection going on but this is my last crayfish tank that I'm excited to show you guys but it's a very simple setup because the other ones are so complicated and I can't see those guys, the crayfish is in there. So I made sure to empty the whole tank out and have the best filtration for breeding. So this tank is a breeding purpose tank. That's why it's so empty in a lot of open spaces. There's one blue electric crayfish back there. And right next to it, right there. It's kind of dark. Let me brighten it up for you guys. Doing great. Been in this uh, tank for about a week now and they're doing absolutely great I have a lot of air filtration going on and there's one hiding back in there it's kinda of difficult to see but that one's the only one with the cave in there but as you can see I have um, you know great aeration going on a lot of bubbles because this is exactly what they need and a hang hangover filter back there but yeah this tank I don't think I'll change too much of it but um, this is what it looks like and as you can see the walls are blue light lighter blue but still, I, I think it'll work. But, so these are my setup for now. And I will continue to let you guys know on the changes. And like I said, I will do some changes with these two tanks for the crayfishes. As well as the white one right there for the female breeding tank. Because it's a little too uh, complicated for me. And this tank stays exactly the same because it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So... Um, if you guys have any questions regarding crayfishes or sea breeding CRS or you know neocaridinas or caridinas or good tank setup with the filter, just let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video when I renovate these tanks. Bye bye.